You're not gonna like it. Fool. You look rough. Good job, little brother. High five. Do not call me brother. All right. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Oh boy, if this is DC's swan song before James Gunn's reboot, yikes. This is not a good way to go. Oh no. Yeah, so right away, this is not good. But I don't think anyone really thought it would be following the incredible lack of advertising, Jason Momoa's comments about his future as Aquaman, the Amber Heard drama, and James Gunn's comments, just to name a few things going against this movie right from the start. I don't wanna say that this movie was doomed, from the start, but it definitely did not bode well. And for the most part, I don't think it really deserves all of that hate, but at the same time, I can admit that this is pretty bad. In a very entertaining way, at least for a critic like me, and some other parts to it, which I'll explain, but whoo, okay. <laughs> Also, I think this is the first DC film in a while not to have any other DC characters or even mention any by name, including the mid credit scene, which is something. There's no Superman, there's no Wonder Woman, no other characters are mentioned in this. It's not very surprising though, given the DCU's reboot coming, so eh, whatever. What's unique about this film in particular is that it has all of the parts to be something great, but it ends up floundering it all through frankly bizarre editing decisions, horrid pacing, and obvious filler scenes that go on for a while. Let's talk about it because I need to break this all down and get this off my chest. Oh my god. First off, Aquaman 2 follows the events of the first film and then some time that isn't really speculated. Aquaman has married Princess Mira, has a son now that's still a baby, and doesn't really like being the king of Atlantis because politics. Blah. While his nemesis, Black Manta, finds a strange black trident that gives him superpowers and visions of what I can only describe as the Night King from Game of Thrones, there's a lot more in common than you think. Aquaman must break his brother Orm out of prison and team up to defeat Black Manta and the Black Trident. It's a fairly standard plot that actually has some decent flair to it and expands on the siblings' relationship and Black Manta a bit. Unfortunately, that focus takes a backseat whenever the plot needs to fast forward. There is no time to chill or take a breath with this pacing, and there is so, so much exposition that is just explained instead of brought about organically to the viewer. They just explain everything, and I'm like, ugh. I don't mind exposition, but this just has way too much and it just isn't told right. To have organic exposition is to have the characters discovering things naturally as it goes along. Instead here, one character will just randomly get a vision that explains all of the history randomly. Or another will just explain what a weird element is for the first time, so the plot can beeline forward until it needs to fill time. Which is, again, bizarre because the film is already just over two hours. Oh my god. If the characters took one moment and discovered exposition organically, it'd be a much better film. Like for instance, there's one scene in the trailer where Aquaman pushes over a giant statue to make a bridge, and instead of him and his brother looking around and coming up with the idea, Momoa sees the statue off screen, reads an inscription off screen, and then makes the bridge in under 10 seconds. Instead of, I don't know, say looking around for a moment and going like, oh hey, what What's this? And reading the inscription closer for a moment before getting an aha moment that the audience can relate to. Instead, he just speeds through it like he's on Games Done Quick and the movie moves on with just a joke at the filler's expense. It was a decent joke, but oh, come on. And when this movie slows down, it's a ton of fun. The fight scenes are all really damn cool and creative, except for one of the start ones, which was almost entirely CG. But everything that's physical is a ton of fun and looks really, really cool with some seriously interesting cinematography and choreography, usually on these giant sets too, which I'll get into. Even in the beginning of the movie, it starts off slow and deliberate, showing the setting, foreshadowing events, and it's all done really well. There's tension, even a jump scare, and cool designs and shots, and then the film goes, oh yeah, Aquaman, and zooms through literal months of exposition. Why? 
You can show us. This is a movie. Show. Don't. Tell. Oh my god. The actors put in a decent amount of work with what they're given. Jason Momoa is still a perfect Brotion man. His energy when he's not being serious is infectious and it's just a ton of fun to follow. He just needed to be himself and it's fantastic. Amber Heard haters can rejoice because she is barely in the movie at all and has like five lines and they're just so stale. She really, really phoned it in here. She does not do much and it's obvious that she was in the middle of a whole bunch of legal stuff and just didn't want to do anything with this movie. Cool. Why are you here then? <laughs> it's fine. She's barely there. It doesn't matter. Patrick Wilson as Orm does a decent job as well, playing the role just fine, which is pretty much all I can really say about it. And Yahya Abdul-Mateen II is a great Black Manta. I just wish he had more to do and could expand the character that clearly he so desperately wants to convey. I think he's going to be the next King the Conqueror in Marvel after Jonathan Major's out, so we'll see. He's my vote. The acting is fine, it's serviceable overall. The true star of this movie, though, is James Wan as the director. I know, weird when I'm saying this is a bad movie, but James Wan is a shining point. That's fine, he's the director, he's not the writer. The issue is the writing here. Wan's cinematography is at some of its best, for the most part. Again, there's a lot of cool one-take tracking shots through the practical sets and even through a window at one point, which was really neat. Some decisions, though, are weird, like a slow-mo shot late in the movie that had me absolutely cracking up when it was supposed to be emotional. But it's extremely solid. The creature designs in this are top-notch, too. Everything from sexy shark dudes to mer people to bizarre desert centipedes centaurs with like fingers for mouths. I don't know how to explain it. They just look really cool. And even these skeleton monsters done in full practical costumes. That's awesome. They're barely in the movie, but they look amazing. <laughs> Just why put all of this effort into things that are barely there? I said before there was some wildly large practical sets here. The cave setting with the fight scene is a standout, but some of them make very little sense. They have a practical desert dungeon set that is used for one short fight scene, and in another shot, it looks like they built an entire two-story house facade and set it on fire, but it's on screen for just a few seconds. Why? Why does the <laughs> Why just a few seconds? Let us watch it. <laughs> Why? Why does the film keep cutting to this comically large submarine bridge that is practically empty? This thing has a row of computers, a tiny throne, and an even tinier steering wheel and nothing else, and it's all practical. Why? <laughs> It's like those scenes with characters sitting at absurdly long dining tables and having to shout out at each other from across them just to be hurt. It's so wonky and weird that it was done practically. I can't get over that. The decision is just bizarre. It's so empty. Fill in some space here. What happened? <laughs> the plot points in this film are an absolute mess too. There's bizarre plot points that make no sense, like Manta leaving his bedroom door open for no reason, other than to have a character eavesdrop. That desert prison I mentioned is directly next to the ocean, even though the point is to be really far from the water, it is a desert. Okay, what? Black Manta draws this little blade that he says he only draws when it's going to taste blood, and it is the most obviously dull blade I have ever seen. I don't understand why it looks like that. And some of the excuses for the filler scenes are just so lazy. Oh, we can't find Manta. Let's ask this separate group of people about him. And then afterwards cut to an island with a giant plume of green smoke jutting out of it like nobody could find this guy? <laughs> The island just always spews green smoke that can be seen for miles around? What the hell? <laughs> and then, oh hey, instead of cutting directly to Manta's hideout when we find it, we have to go through this jungle with details that will never be brought up again for the rest of the movie or hold any significance whatsoever. It's so painfully obvious and just there to pad time and flex the creature designs that, oh, it's frustrating for me because there's an enjoyable film deep 
deep down in this mess, and it's just buried under atrocious writing and lazy plot choices. If I were to make this film better, I'd rewrite maybe a third or half of this film entirely and have the siblings exploring the Forgotten Kingdom itself be most of the runtime. Oh, did I mention that? The kingdom isn't even name dropped until the climax. Only the climax features anyone in this kingdom at all and only like one very small area of it. It's weird that it took up that much of the title. If you're going to be that focused on it, why not just call the title Aquaman and the Black Trident? The trident shows up way more and is way more important than this weird kingdom that we don't explore at all. <laughs> No, if I were writing this, I'd have it as an adventure film like Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider, but with Aquaman and Orm exploring this lost kingdom, discovering exposition along the way while trying to catch up to and stop Black Manta from whatever he was doing, finding things out along with the audience as they explore this weird new kingdom that nobody's heard about or seen because it's lost. Come on, it writes itself here. And instead of that, we got like a halfway heist movie with very little stakes that turns into a buddy comedy action film halfway through with an environmental message that is not really talked about very well. It's weird and disjointed and in better writing hands could have been something so, so much better. I don't fault Juan for this at all. Again, I think his cinematography is some of the best, but the writing here, oh, it's awful. It's so bad. Ultimately, this film is just okay at best, but it really needed a fresh set of eyes on this script. Maybe we'll see how it goes with Gunn's Superman movie next. I hope Momoa stays as Aquaman. He's a great Aquaman, but I guess we'll see. As it stands though, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom gets a 6 out of 10 from me. Hey, hey guys, thanks for sticking around. I kind of wanted to give this a lower score after I wrote out the review, but my initial reflections coming out of it was like, oh, this is a six right off the bat. I'm so confused. I don't understand any of the plot decisions here. Just a complete and total mess. They should have killed off more characters. They should have done a lot more. Maybe they could have just had a written prologue instead of having this weird monologue exposition. Just why? So stupid. There's so many weird, weird decisions. I feel like this had to be a victim of rewrites or the writer's room getting too stuck in its own head about what they wanted to tell and do. Maybe they got influenced because they knew Gunn was taking over and just whatever they were going to do didn't matter. Because there is a good story here. There really, really is. That could have been explored in such a smarter and more interesting way than what we got. And I think that makes this movie interesting enough to go into and explore just to figure out how it could have been made into something better. Where did did it go wrong? At what point did it fly off the rails and nothing matter? How the hell did it get all of these giant sets that are practical? They look so cool. They're really neat sets. I just don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the cave fight scene. Again, the fight scenes in this are fantastic. They're really, really good and wildly inventive. Except for the one that's complete CG. It looks bad. Everything else looks fantastic. So, I don't know. I want more practical effects. I want more practical suits here. The creature suits that are practical look fantastic. It's bizarre we didn't lean more into that. I think James Wan really wanted to do a somewhat horror movie, especially after The Trench which was supposed to be the Aquaman spinoff that was going to be a horror movie, but I'm not entirely sure what happened to that. I think that scrapped entirely with Gunn, but who knows? Anyway, did you guys see this? What do you think of DC's last movie before the reboot? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. After that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss one. And that's it. Have a great day. And if you're not, have a better one. See ya. Shepherd in the arm, talk, you're just a lost son of